We're back in Leading Edge. This is Nick Coma. If he's been with us before, I, learned, I, I meant to look it up. It's it been way too long. He now wants to serve in the Ohio legislature if they can ever get their act together and figure out what district he would be in. <laughs> and uh, I don't, with the Supreme Court involved, I guess there's a chance. Uh, left to their own uh, volition. Uh, I, 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 I just, I don't know. All right, we're, we're, we're doing some state stuff. And then in the next few minutes, we're going to shift gears to some city stuff. Uh, maybe because of the pandemic, um, Nick Comimes, more parents are involved in their kids' education. They were forced to in many cases, and that's good. That's good. But in what some see as a purely political ploy, many parents are now being encouraged to take control of curriculum, especially when it covers issues of, well, everything from sexual identity to race relations or other important issues that are now part of the culture wars in this country. What does State Representative Nick Comimes do in that case? Yeah, I'm... I'm I'm nervous about this this sort of line that we're heading down because I think that it signals, you know, some historical, you know, they don't want to teach us our history because they don't want us to realize that this type of censorship is really problematic because it has led to uh, an awful lot of violence in our history uh, and, and potentially wars. And so I'm concerned about what this means for our country as we continue this dialogue. Um, I think that the reality is that Oftentimes, a party that likes to say that they're about small government loves to be really big and tell us all types of things about what we can say, what we can do. Um, and this is just another example of that. Rather than actually giving people the freedom to uh, learn and to use critical thinking skills that they will learn while they're in school uh, to objectively decide what is uh, important and what has happened throughout history, they're basically saying, we're going to rewrite this history. We're going to whitewash it and make sure that people don't actually know what really truly happened uh, throughout our history, why the dynamics that exist today exist. And that's really what this is about. Well, in some cases, there are people who want books thrown out because there's bad words in the books. And I, 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 I like to stay above using bad words. But Nick, I also drove a school bus for three and a half years up until this past Christmas. Your kids know those words. I'm, <laughs> right. I'm just telling you. Right. Sometimes and they, and they will them. learn them with that device that you've put in their hands. You yeah, know, exactly. I mean, that's the reality. Sometimes they aim them at the bus driver. But OK, <laughs> let's do some local stuff because time's getting short here. Nick Coma is my sure. guest. Um, you guys passed a budget that has been described by one of your members and accountants, I'll point out, as a ticking time bomb, which, one which continues, quoting her, deficit spending. And you, uh, Mr. Coma, has voted in favor. So why aren't the current concerns of those who voted against the budget and there were three of them. Why aren't those concerns legitimate or are they? Well, I think the reality is that we have one person who makes a lot of claims about what this budget is going to do and says a lot of, in my opinion, rhetoric, uh, you know, use the terms, uh, this adds un unnecessary bureaucracy. Um, this is in an inflated budget, these types of terminology. And I think it's really double digit pay increases for people sitting behind desks. Sure. Great. I mean, we've been giving pay increases across the board because we have historically not been doing those for multiple decades. And so we've been trying to right uh, the wrongs. And I think that it's it's you know, it's important to recognize that all work has value and that we show our value by by paying people what they deserve and what they're worth. Um, and that's why we've made it a priority within the city to provide pay raises, because we understand that people are providing services to people and we want to make sure that we value them. Right. But I, I want to get back to that first point and just at least acknowledge the fact that there's one person saying a lot of things that are you know scary about this budget but it's just one person and it's you know i think it's we katie moline folks just so we're not if you don't follow this stuff closely enough it's ms moline who was a sort sure. of public account and okay. so we should take a step back and just recognize that there are lots more people who are not saying these types of things and in fact refuting them legal opinion after legal opinion that we received um referral after referral from the finance department all refuted everything that she claimed she just kept carrying those claims all the way through the oh, let me do today. this for you nick are you guys moving are you still moving money from capital improvements over to general fund? Because that stuff needs to stop. Yes, and I thought we, we had been told it would. Yeah, we were hoping to have that happen this year. And I think that many of us on council really tried our best to shave off what we could from transferring from the CIP, but we were not in a position to do that. I think part of this goes back to that early discussion about what our state was funding us. We used to close the gap between transferring our CIP by what we used to get from the state 
uh, government, but now we don't get that anymore. So we've all been adjusting since that time period and it's been a tough adjustment. And I think that the reality is we keep operational budgets flowing and that's really what's gonna keep the basic services for folks. But we do have to have an investment. I think we're fortunate to have the ARPA money this year, but it means that we have to really get down to this and stop transferring from the CIP for sure. Uh, well, yeah, you guys, I mean, between voters approving an income tax increase, which they did, and then the big windfall of federal money, uh, if, if the city's finances go south on this thing now, you all deserve to get blown out, and it shouldn't happen if we're all doing our homework and being responsible. I Don't wanted to get to the, the, the leader of the mayor's anti-gun violence program has announced his resignation, but we're out of time. Uh, but I think he's going to be on my program next week, so tune in for that. In the meantime, I'm going to thank uh, Nick Comives. A uh, member of Pluto City Council, now serving in his fifth year in that body for being with us, keeping us on the leading edge of his interests in serving the state legislature and the current goings on at City Hall. Good to see you, my friend. Take care. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. You bet. And when I come back, we wrap up our chat with London Mitchell on the radio for over half a century and on Leading Edge next.